we talked about flexible lists which can expand and contract and which are like a train, right? So they have this kind of linked structure. So let's try and understand how we might actually program such a list, right? So a list is now a sequence of nodes. Each node consists of a value and something that points to the next node. And we argued that using this plumbing operation, it's easy to insert and delete locally. But in order to navigate to a particular point in the list, you will have to start from the head each time. So it's going to take you some time to reach that point. Okay? So the typical way to represent these is as collections of these nodes. right? So we need something which represents one node in the list and then we will string them together. So we define a class node and this class node will have two parts, right? So it will have one part which stores the value. So let's just call it self.value. So remember this object-oriented thing that we discussed in the very first week. So each object refers to itself through this name self. So self.value is my value field and self.next is my name for the next node in the list, right? So if there is no next node, I will just use the default Python value none. So this is the initialization, right? So when I initialize a list, right, I pass a value, I set the value to that list, and initially this list has only one node, so the next is always going to be none. So one of the important things we have to deal with is this notion of an empty list. Right? So when we write something like in, in, in normal Python, if we want an empty list, we have to write this. Because if we don't write this, and later on we try to add something to it. Supposing I want to start with a list with the value 0, and I write l dot append 0, then Python will say, I don't know why you are allowed to use append on l, because you have not told me it's a list. Right? So we always need to initialize a value to an empty data structure, a data type of that value, in order to tell Python what is the legal operation allowed on that. Right? So this initialization is important. Now the problem with uh, Python is that there is no way to tell it other than to initialize it. Right? There is no way to say L is a list. So other programming languages, if you are familiar with programming languages like C or C++ or Java, whenever you use a variable or a name, you first have to tell the uh, compiler which type of value it is going to hold. So you have to say I am using i and it is going to be an int. I am using L and it is going to be an array. So this information is there independent of the value that you store, so there is a separate piece of, uh, you know, metadata as it is called about your variables which is known in advance. Now in Python we do not have that. So we have to be able to represent these empty lists. So in our context, think of a node as a box with two parts, right. So this is our value and this is our next, right. So we know that if it is a singleton, the next is none. So what we will use as a convention is that if the value is also none, then this is an empty list, right? The only situ situation in which you could have a node which has no value is when it is the first node of an empty list. And if it is the first node of an empty list, by definition, there are no other nodes, right? So this gives us this motivation for this function. So this says, is the list I am looking at empty or not? So it says, if the value is none, yes, it is empty, return true. If the value is not run, then it cannot be empty, return false. And if the value is none, implicitly the next must be none. We will never ever check the next if the value is none because we will believe it is an empty list. Right? So the empty list is one where self.value is none. So the way we would use this, remember, is to just call this node class as we would call a function with, with an argument which is optional because we have this default value. Right? So if we call node with no argument, we get an empty list, right? The self.v by default is set to the value none. On the other hand, if we call it with a concrete argument like a 5, then we will get a node containing this, this is in Python notation, this would lead the list 5, right? And this would be the empty list, right? So this is what we are saying. So if I now, for instance, check it, then it will say that L1 is empty is true and L2 is empty is false because L1, if I look at it, self.value is none. L2, if I look at it, self.value is not none. So this is our basic building block, right? So this is how we build up a list. Now we have to think about how we will actually grow and shrink these lists. So in a list, there are many different ways you could define the operations, but the most conventional thing to do with a list is to take a list and either add at the end, which we call append, or insert at the beginning. Right? Now you can modify it to send, I mean you can up, up, uh, apply the same principle to insert anywhere in the middle also. 
but the two interesting cases are append and insert and they have different properties. Actually, append turns out to be much easier than insert as we will see. Right? So typically what we have through this kind of a thing is say L1 is pointing to the first node in the list. The first node is pointing to the next node and so on. So what we want to say is take the node point, the list pointed to by L1 and append a value V to it. So we want to add a value at the end of the list. So what are the possibilities, right? So the first possibility is that there is nothing in the list. The list is empty, right? So if the list is empty, right, then we basically take this list currently looks like none, none, and we change it to the list which looks like v none, right? So we just update the value field to v and we leave the next field unchanged and we are done, right? Now, <coughs> If we are at the end of the list, right, the last node will have some value and it will say there is no, there are no more nodes in this. So in this case, what we do is we create a new node, right? So we call this node constructor as it's called. We create a new node which will be of the form v comma none because we need a node which has the value v that we're trying to append, and we set this to point there, right? So self dot next. If self dot next is none which means I'm at the end of the list, right? Then instead of making it none, I make it point to a new node that I create now. I create a node with the value v and I make this node point to that. And if I'm in the middle of the list, right? So supposing I'm here and it says that there is an, there are some more nodes to my right, right? Then I just postpone the work by saying that, okay, appending to this node is the same as appending to the next node. So I just say append on the next node. Right? So if I say L dot append, I'm appending to the first node. If the first node has an X node, it will say, okay, append to the second node. Finally, it will keep walking down and this recursion will end at the last node. The last node will say, oh, I have no next node. And then you will create the node and append it. And there is this base case where the initial node itself was empty, where I just update, I don't create a node, I just change the value from none to V. Right? So this is a very straightforward recursive implementation of append. It has three cases. Am I empty? Am I the last node? Okay, or if I'm not the last node, then recursively call. So, in this case, it's quite easy to think of how you would do an iterative implementation. Essentially, you do the same thing. I check is empty. If it's not empty, I keep following this next pointer, right? I can create a loop which says I keep going to next, next, next until next is none. Then I know I'm at the last node, and then I do the same thing. So instead of using recursion to go this way, I can use a loop saying while the next pointer is available, go to the next pointer. So here is an iterative implementation, right? So if it is empty, replace the value from none to v. Otherwise, we loop through this next until we find the last node. How do we find the last node? Next is none, right? And then at that point, in the same way as we did before, we append. So here is the thing. So if it is empty, we do the same thing. If it is empty, we just change the value to v and return. Otherwise, we have to start here and we have to keep walking down. So we use a new name to do this walking. So we call it temp. So we first point temp the first thing. Then if temp has a next, then we will move temp to the next. So temp will become temp.next. So temp will keep moving from one node to the next so long as the next is defined. It will exit from this when it reaches the last node. So when I have here, when I reach temp, supposing this is the last node, then it will have no successor. So when temp.next is none, this while loop exits. So now I know that temp is pointing to the last node in my list. At this point, I just create a new node v as before, and I make temp.next point to it, and I'm done. Right? So this is an iterative version of that append. So both of these are very simple, because we don't have to do anything except, for in some sense, go to the end of the list and add something at the end. So the other operation, as I said, is insert. I want to insert not at the end of the list, but at the beginning. So I call that append. I call this insert. Right? So I have a value v, which I want to stick. I want to put this here. So what is the logical thing to do? The logical thing to do is to say that I make this head point there and V point here. Now, unfortunately, this is a problem because inside a function, right? In, when, I, when I call an object, it's like calling a function. If I call a function with the value L, which is like this, uh, 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 something which can change. But if I update it inside, then it gets lost, right? So if I, if I, it gets created, I, I will lose this list. I cannot take, I cannot take the head and point it inside the function, change what it's pointing to. 
right? It's the same as if I if I pass an L to a, a list processing function and I reassign L inside, then the L inside becomes different from the L outside. So outside nothing changes. So the same will happen here. If I go inside this thing and I change where head is pointing to, then the old head will remain where it was and this whatever change I make will happen inside the function but will not happen outside. So this insert will have no global effect, right? So this is not allowed. So this would be the easy solution. Just stick a new node at the beginning and point to that instead of the first node. Right? That, but that's not allowed. So now what do we do? Okay. So what we do is we have to do something which is kind of uh, uh, not obvious initially, which is we have to. So what is the status of this node? Right. The remember that in a linked list, the physical position of a node makes no difference. Only the logical position matters. So what we want to do is make this new value v logically come before v zero. Right? But we, for us, the first value you point to is always in this node. So the, the first place I point to must contain v. So I, I need to move this v here. But if I move this v here, then where does the v0 go? Well, I have made space for it, so I will move this v0 there. Right? So what we can do instead is we can exchange the positions of v and v0. So I create a new node, I have a new node which I want to add which has a value v and I have a list which starts with v0. So I just swap the values. So the nodes are still where they are. So my head is now pointing to a new list, the same old list rather, which starts with the new value v and then goes to v1. And v0 is now sitting up there. But now I can do this plumbing, right? I can make v0 point, v point to v0 and v0. So I can make this point there and this point here, right? So once I do that, then I'm done. So this is how we insert at the beginning of the list. So what we do is we swap the value of what head is pointing to with the value we want to exchange and then we do this update, right? So here is some code for that. It's very straightforward. It's not very complicated. So again, if it is empty, inserting into an empty list is equivalent to appending into an empty list. If I have an empty list, it is the first and the last element of the new list. So I just update the value to v, right? Otherwise, I create a new node which I'm going to add to my list at the beginning but I can't add it directly, right? So what I do is I first exchange this value and the value of self. So self, remember, is pointing to the beginning of the list. So self is the zeroth value in my old list. So I exchange the value of the old list head and the new node that I've created. And then I do the swapping of links, right? So I make the new node point to the next of the old list and the new thing next point to the old. So I take self.next and make it point to the new node and I take new node dot next. So basically I had this link, right? And I have this new node here. So I'm now going to change this. So I'm going to say that instead of pointing here, I'm going to make this point there. So that's the self dot next is equal to new node. And instead of having, I mean, right now this is not pointing to anything because it was a new node, it was none. So I'm going to make that point here, right? So I do this plumbing and I'm done. So this is my insert, right? What about delete? So now delete, is more interesting when you actually tell me what value to delete. When I insert a value, it's I, I said that we will look at the case where the insertion happens at a fixed place, either the beginning or the end. So the end is append, the beginning is insert. But deleting the first value of node is not typically of a list is not typically what we want. What we want to say is I give you a value v, please delete it from the list. Now deleting from a list can mean many things, right? It could mean delete all the values or delete the first value or delete the last value or delete some value. So let's just for the sake of concreteness say that when we say delete a value v, we mean remove the first occurrence of v. And in particular, if there is no v in the list, then it will just do nothing, right? So deleting a v from a list that does not contain a v does not create an error, it merely does nothing. So what we have to do is we have to go through the list and look for the first v, right? And then we have to delete. It. Now the problem is that, you know, I don't know if you have seen, but you know, old style people uh, uh, demolishing a house, they will, you find these people who are workers who are standing on a wall and they will have a hammer and they'll be hammering the wall below them. And I've always wondered how they know when the wall is going to be safe enough to stand on and when they have to jump off and then finish the job standing, right? But it's kind of easier to hammer down like this. So in the same way, if you're sitting on the node, which has a V and you want to delete it, right, it's kind of difficult, right? So if you're sitting here and you want to delete this V, that's not a good way to do. So what you want to do is actually sit here and look ahead and see is the next node that I want to delete, right? And the next node is the one that I want to delete, then I will make myself point to that node so I can bypass it, right? So this 
Bypassing is basically just way of saying that my next pointer points to the node with V. Instead, I make it to point to the node after that. And how do I know that? Because the node with V tells me where the next node is. Right? So let's look at this code. Right? So this is the bypass. Right? So what we say is that I want to delete the value V. Right? So if I if the current value is V, okay. So this is a difficult case that we'll come to. Right? So, the recursive case just says that if the next, if, if I am not deleting it here, then I delete the v from the next point onwards, okay. So, we are, but, so the difficult case is really now that we are pointing from the head to a node containing v and then v1 and then so on, right. So, this is the thing where I want to delete this node. We have the same problem as before with insert, which is I cannot make this head point there directly because I cannot change the node that the head is pointing to, right. So, exactly the same problem when we said when you insert at the beginning, we would like to make the head point to the new node and then come down to the old node, but we cannot do that. So, what did we do there? We exchanged, right. We exchanged the two values and then made this, the new node actually the second node in the list by making this, uh, the zeroth node point to that. So, we can do the same thing here. So, what we do is instead of trying to delete this, we move this v1 here. So, logically there is no v anymore, right and then we delete this. So, so that is what is happening here. So, we say that if I want to delete the value that I am pointing to, right, then what I do is I check, I mean there may be no next node, maybe this is a singleton, in which case I just set it to none. But if I have a next node, right, then I copy the value from the next node and now I bypass. So, this is this bypass. So, self dot next my next is pointing to my next next. So, whatever the next node says is the next, is, is the node that is two steps down is what I am going to point to, right. So, this is a simple recursive version. So, basically it has now three cases, either the, I have reached the end of the list and there is nothing to delete. So, I have an empty load a list and nothing is there, I, I just get out, okay. Otherwise, if I have to delete the value here, then I first delete it, right. So, I just change this value to none and now I check whether there was something after me because I cannot remember if I cannot have value none unless it is the empty list, right. So, if, if it is not the empty list, I have to do some work. So, in that case, what I have to do is I have to copy this value and then I have to bypass, right. So, so to draw it again, so basically if I have, let us say I have three nodes, right, and this is my v and this is v1 and this is v2, then what I will do is I will first set this to none, right then I will copy v1 here, right. And then I will say self dot next dot next is this, this thing, right. So, I will say move this to there. So, that is the bypass. So, this is a recursive implementation and as an exercise, you can write an iterative version just to check that you understand what is going on, right. So, what we have seen is that by taking this class node which contains a value and a next pointer and we can string it together like a train and make a flexible list. So, programming a flexible list is not very difficult, we can make one of our own, okay. In this, because we start from the beginning, adding at the end of the list is quite easy because we do not, all the hap, uh, difficult part happens when we have some changes to make at the node which head points to. So, the node that is pointed to by the first name of the list is the one that is tricky to handle. So, append is easy, insert requires some care, right. And when deleting basically what we do is effectively we look one step ahead. And so, we try to delete the value at the next node by bypassing it, okay. But then if we are doing it recursively, it amounts to then coming to the node and then deleting it and then we have to do something else. If you are doing it iteratively, you look at the next node and then bypass it, okay. So, this is what a flexible list looks like. But as we will see, actually the Python lists as they are implemented in the language are not these flexible lists. So, all this uh, analysis of what flexible lists do does not really hold for Python because of that.